So this switch back, in, in theory, the same physical elements are going to apply. There's just a few more in the way of performance because they're starting to ramp up a bit. The trail's a bit noisier. There's a more going on. There's more for me to deal with. As you can see in the last one, we talked about the gradient, most of the gradient being through the apex. So in the section is the gradient where a lot more of the acceleration is likely to occur, or if I heavily brake, where the push might occur. What I've got to manage there is my body position, make sure I stay in the pocket, and that whatever speed I choose to go down there, it's A, a speed that I chose and not one that's being pushed upon me, and B, I stay in the pocket. Secondly, a bit more visually going on, a bit more visual performance cues. And as we know, trees can work in various ways. Sometimes we can use them to help us, but quite a lot of times they can be a bit of a distraction. Now they're not on the trail, but what they can do here is they start to frame the trail. So we've got a picture framing effect here, which as I come in, we like to look through straight through picture frames to the picture beyond. Unfortunately for us, the trail goes on down there. So I really want to be pitching my eyes, eye line is down and through the section and out to a virtual point down the trail as far as I can see. Pretty difficult when I've got the distraction of the trees as I ride in, not to end up looking late. As I come in, looking straight through here, it won't be till I get past this tree that I might find it easier and the trail opens up in terms of where I can see right down the trail. So what I want to do is start training myself not to look through those frames, but look through the trees to where the trail actually goes. And I can start that looking process way back up here and having those glances across, checking where things are going, not using this as a frame to frame the trail with the non-trail ahead, but getting my head to look around and beyond the frame to where I actually want to be. We've got a little element of line choice here where we might take a higher line to widen up the apex. This is definitely going to be the easier line, but it leaves me with a later apex, so more to do later on. Um, really and truly, I want to make those decisions as early as possible. So as I come into the section, commit to a line, doesn't matter which one it is, but really commit to that section, to your skill set. Think through, we can have a little push into the corner so we can pump through and almost def always definitely looking through. So a little bit more to handle as I come into this section, noisier trail, more performance cues. We've got a little bit of performance cue waiting, waiting for the acceleration as we go down the fall line. We've got a little bit of the visual performance cues of the framing of the trees, a little bit of Star Wars effect, am I too close, Using trying not to use my focal vision to judge spatial awareness. And then we've got a little bit of the input where the trail is a bit more broken up, where I want to make sure I stay in the pocket. If I'm under braking, then I want to stay in the pocket and work my way around. Now you may have read many times, don't break in a corner. That's an absolute fallacy. What we want to try not to do though, is try not to decelerate in the corner. I will be using my brakes through the corner. I don't just want to accelerate under the forces of gravity and momentum. I want to control my speed. Speed control is not a problem in the section as long as it's controlled rather than jabby. And I'm looking to not slow down, but control my rate of acceleration. So massively important on a switchback not to get hooked up with, oh, I mustn't break in a corner. As I cross that full line, the bike might run away with me, and if that causes me too much emotional distress, I'm going to freeze, look up to where I think I'm going, and rather than following the trail around the corner, probably just carry on down the full line until something might bigger or stronger than me gets in my way. Taking it a little bit slower so I can talk you through the process, free up some bandwidth of my mind to try and juggle what I'm doing. Set yourself up, heel and wrist drop. I haven't given myself much of a run in, so I've got to get into my cleat, but I've already set my heel and wrist, and I've kind of set my breathing. Having just pushed up, that's a bit erratic, but I want to set my breathing up nice and relaxed and start to look through the section. Now, this is all going to be happening when you ride this trail as you approach. So as I'm coming across the traverse, I'm making sure I'm nicely in the pocket, heels and wrists drop, and looking through the section. So setting myself up nicely, I can push into the upper slope and into the down slope and away we go. So as we approach this switch back, it's a bit of a longer drawn out switch back, but just as we come in, there's a bit more camber. So ideally I want my outside foot down, coming across the traverse and twist my hips up the slope and then quickly switch to outside foot round the corner, which is opposite foot down. Now obviously when we're trying for power, we probably throw that foot over the top and down, and push down hard and generate some drive into the section. Here, that's not such a problem in terms of acceleration. In fact, I'm probably looking to control my acceleration. So it's perfectly okay to go from my right foot, right foot down as I'm traversing to left foot down as I come through the corner, but by pedaling backwards. 
Just though, however, as I don't want to get pushed out the front of the bike in sections, neither do I want to get pushed out the back by slumping back. So just be wary that there's very little torque on the chain, if any, as I back pedal. So I don't want to slump back pedal too quickly, but I just want to make sure I stay in the pocket, this time not falling out the back as the bike rotates out from underneath me. So we'll just have a look at the hip twist and the foot switch as we come through this little corner before we just take it up a notch for the final section just up here. So on this traverse, I'm going to be outside foot downhill, foot down, just twisting my hips up into the slope, but then there's a quick change onto outside foot for the corner itself, for the switchback itself. So I'm going to drop back into that to buy myself some time, to buy myself some brain bandwidth because it's easier to do it that way and less thinking involved, and I should get a nice smooth corner through. So as I come in, I'm turning my hips up the slope, and as I come into the corner, switching feet to outside pedal, twisting those hips, and back round we go. Now obviously that was at a slower speed, but the same method's going to apply if I'm adding in some extra miles an hour on the entry point. I've just got to do more in the section more quickly. So the faster your entry speed, the better prepped up you need to be mentally and physically, and the quicker you need to make those changes within the section in terms of the foot switch, and where my eyes bounce up off the trail, and any energy management and speed control that needs to be done.